Hello and welcome to Hot Pursuit, part of Ahwal News online podcast and video series. Today, we are going to speak about the uh, escalating crisis between Turkey and NATO, and also between Turkey and, in particular, Sweden and Finland, two countries which submitted their uh, application for membership in NATO. As uh, well known and reported, Erdogan uh, more than once uh, threatened Sweden and Finland uh, with veto unless uh, several conditions of, of Turkey are met by these two countries. Security guarantees, cutting off the ties between the Syrian Kurdish militia, YPG, and also uh, lifting or easing of the embargoes, especially uh, imposed by Sweden since uh, 2019, after an incursion uh, into Syria by the Turkish armed forces. My guest joining me from Stockholm, Professor Jan Hallenberg, research leader of the International, uh, International F Institute, Institute of International Affairs, Utrikes Politiska Institutet. Good to have you, Jan. Thank you. So uh, things are ex escalating and getting more and more complicated uh, as of today. Uh, today is 24th of May, Tuesday, uh, Erdogan last night, while uh, not welcoming Turkey and uh, the fin Sweden and Finland to Turkey uh, delegations, uh, also uh, threatened, issued new threats, uh, imminent threats to for a new incursion, new operation into onto Syrian soil, basically those areas controlled by the Kurdish militia, YPG. It is rather imminent because he openly declared uh, and said uh, operation. Uh, and after a meeting, after a meeting with National Security Council on Thursday, uh, it seems uh, the plans are seriously on the table to be implemented. So uh, also the Finnish and Swedish delegations, uh, as reported by the Swedish media, are on their way to Ankara to meet uh, Turkish government. Uh, and this is where things stand. Uh, not getting less complicated, but perhaps even more complicated. Uh, Jan, can you... Um, Tell us if the new developments have been, have been of, a, of a surprise to you and uh, how do you see the, the, the picture emerging now uh, in, in the context of NATO? I think the new uh, picture that you sketch here of, of another incursion is, is a news to me. I did not know that this was so imminent and, and it would, of course, com complicate matters even more. And I mean, I would say that Sweden uh, is a bit taken aback, Swedish political circles are a bit taken aback by the Turkish uh, actions, particularly by the president himself and to some extent by the foreign minister and by the Turkish ambassador to Sweden, who, who uh, give us a lot of conditions. After, if they are fulfilled, perhaps Turkey will say yes. And it seems to me that uh, it will be difficult for the Swedish government to, to fulfill these wishes. I mean, I, when it comes to the, the arms embargo from 2019, I think it could be discussed at least a, an easing over time. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the YPG and stating that they are terrorists, I don't think that will happen. I think Sweden will follow the EU practice here and, and the YPG is not characterized as a, as, a, as a terrorist organization. And then we have some Kurds that uh, the Turkish government wants uh, extradited. That will absolutely not happen. That is absolutely uh, impossible. I mean, there are perhaps 100,000 Kurds in Sweden and they play an in, in, not in, in a significant political role. We have Kurds in the Swedish parliament. I mean, one of my PhD students is a Kurd <laughs> to, to, to have a personal. And, and, and I've spoken to the Kurdish self-government in, in Iraq on one of their broadcasts. So, I mean, there, it's part of the Swedish political scene, the Kurds, and they are not seen in the same way as they are by the Erdogan uh, government. But given that, of course, I mean, the Swedish government realizes that it has to negotiate. And uh, as, you, as you said, the delegation from Finland and Sweden that comes to Ankara today are, of course, one part of this negotiation. And I'm sure there, there, it's a possibility for statements from the Swedish governments saying that we will continue our struggle against the PKK, 
We are against all forms of terrorism. And as I said, slight easing uh, over time of the arms embargo, that, that could at least be discussed. So, so they, these are the things that the Swedes are thinking of. But you can, for, for our international audience, there is a difference between the Swedish and the Finnish situation here in several respects. What are they? Uh, one important one is that for Finland, security issues are security issues. They are paramount. Sweden is a state in, in which security issues are not as uh, crucial as they have been for Finland, who has been invaded and fought with Russia several times in, in recent years, fairly recent years at least. So the Finns decide on security policy. And the foreign minister has already said, we will come to an agreement with the Turks. Whereas the Swedes are saying, we will discuss with the Turks. We are hoping that there will be a solution, but there is much more uh, leaving open what that solution might be. Whereas for the Finns, this is national security. It is paramount. Everything that stands in the way of NATO membership must be solved. Uh, but, but, and then we have the signals from, from uh, the um, General Secret Secretary General of, of NATO, who says that the two countries must enter together. And I mean that I think that is also the policy of the U US government. So I'm sure that on top of the things that you and I are discussing here, there are political aspects going on. There are the negotiations going on. I mean, there must be contact between the US government and the Turkish government uh, on this issue. And I think that the Swedes are also realizing that the bilateral relationship is only one of several political games that are being played here. And then again, to return to the perhaps imminent incursion into northern Syria. I mean, that would complicate matters even further. But Sweden will be a little bit more, more uh, careful in, in stating uh, what they think about Turkish actions during mm. this period. Retired and experienced uh, Turkish ex diplomats that I've been speaking to in the past two or three days, they seem to agree that this will be, this may, this process may drag a long time, depending on the, uh, on the domestic conjuncture of Turkey, the political scene, uh, and also the, uh, what they see as uh, rather um, maximalistic position of Turkey. These talks are, of course, off the record. Uh, I cannot name names, but uh, they were, as retired, you know, experienced ambassadors, rather pessimistic. But if it is a strategic decision to uh, to get in Sweden and Finland into NATO uh, by the United States, which is the main actor, and also by Stockholm and Helsinki, can really Turkey? stop and block this process a um, long time? Or how, where, how do you see the Guardians not being caught? Is, is it imminent short term until Madrid uh, summit I, or, or further? I would hope until Madrid, but I think it could drag on further than that. But I think there will be a lot of diplomatic pressure on Turkey uh, during this time. We, we already heard Estonian prime minister saying that they had signed some preliminary note of accession for Finland and Sweden already and I said that they are these countries are very welcome in, in NATO and I think there will be several more such signals from other NATO members mm. uh, directed at Turkey that we want this thing to be solved and I mean whether Estonia says so or not will not influence Turkey so much but when it becomes 20 or 25 members and when the Americans start to uh, perhaps putting the skew, screw on a little bit on, on the Turkish government I think things might, might change. And, and what I have been thinking in the last few days is, is that perhaps the bilateral relationship between the US and Turkey will be important here and the discussion on the F-16s, uh, the less sophisticated plane, not the F-35, the really sophisticated one. That, that I think is out of the question. But the Turks, I think the Americans realize that the Turks have to get something. Mm -hmm. And the F-16s, it seems to me, would be possible given that the Turks accept membership for both Nordic countries. So that's uh, one way I think. And if that takes three weeks or three months or six months, I mean, it's impossible to say. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, easing of the embargoes imposed by, by Sweden uh, to Turkey following the incursion uh, two, three years ago. Um, uh, they are basically a, the combat material like powder, uh, you know, explore, explosive, material, etc. Uh, how far 
can Sweden go into in the concessions, especially in the context of if a new incursion or wider operation onto Swedish uh, to Syrian soil, excuse me, happens. If it, there's a new incursion, it'll get more complicated, clear, clearly. And I don't see this embargo being eased very uh, imminently. But I, I think that there will be sort of a signal or perhaps even a, a little statement saying that over time, as Sweden and Turkey continues to cooperate within the NATO framework, the Swedish government is lo looking positively towards gradually easing the embargo to the extent that you said the, these goods that cannot be exported. Something like that, a signal to the Turks that th this is a mutual relationship. We have to get things out of it, both of us. And if you give us the yes on the membership, we will be uh, able and willing to discuss easing this embargo over time. But again, I mean, th there's a question mark here with the new uh, mm. incursion, as you said, uh, the possible new incursion. Uh, again, I say the, the Swedish government realizes that it must be more careful this time in a uh, direct reaction from the Swedish government. Uh, in, it seems to me that Sweden really fought for those embargoes in 2019. Mm -hmm. This time, I think Sweden will speak more softly and tread how, more softly. How important will be the pressure coming from, from the, uh, the Kurdish deputies, uh, Kurdish Swedish deputies from the parliament, uh, the government hangs in a sort of delicate balance, and also yeah. the also the 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 YPG, the Syrian Kurdish militia, with which uh, Sweden has, uh, has has regular uh, connections or contacts. Uh, how important are, will will they be in the, in this context? Uh, they will make their voices heard, but I think, I mean, state interests will have to trump that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Social Democrats, who are perhaps clo closest to, to, to the Kurdish organizations, also realize that they have to listen more to the Turkish demands on these. But again, as I say, I mean, there are clear limits. Extradition, as I said, totally is out, out, of, is out of question. It's out of the question. It mm -hmm. won't happen. I, I don't think the YPG thing will happen either, but th that is conceivable, mm. uh, in, in my opinion. And, and, and the arms embargo, I said, I think there's more, most flexibility there, possibly. Clarify one point. The main um, element in the continuing relations between uh, Swedish government and uh, Swedish authorities and the uh, PYD, YPG forces, units in Syria. Um, according to one view, one information, a piece of information I received, they have to do primarily with the ISIS prisoners, uh, some of whom are, are Swedish citizens. Uh, and uh, since, um, again, what I heard was the Swedish uh, legislation was so weak that uh, Sweden had to cooperate to keep them there. Uh, in, in, in the prisons or camps uh, in, 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 in uh, Rojava. Uh, is that the main primary reason for keeping the, the relations or are there other reasons as well? It's at least a very important reason, I think. And, and it's one reason why it's very hard to cut ties with the YPG because there are, as you said, Swedes in those camps. And Sweden has to cooperate with things with these, uh, uh, the Kurdish guardians of those camps. And Sweden doesn't want to have a lot of people coming back uh, who might threaten Sweden with uh, support for terrorism. So I think that's an important one. And, and uh, secondly, I think there was a, uh, given the, the positive view of Kurds in Sweden, these people who fought ISIS were regarded positively. I mean, they are a force who fight for uh, some sovereignty within their region in Sir Syria, and they fight ISIS. And they do so very bravely. And there was a lot of reporting in Sweden on, on how bravely the Kurds fought in, in northern Syria. And that is part of the reason why they were so many Swedes were so negatively uh, surprised when they saw the, the Turks coming in and, and really shooting at the YPG and, and calling them terrorists. I think it, it will be again very difficult, mm. both for the reason that you, that you mentioned and for the reputation that the YPG has gotten in Sweden as, as being a positive force. And I mean, the, uh, the Swedish foreign uh, defense minister seems to have met with YPG fighters or, or leaders 
uh, which attests to the fact that there are these ties and it's going to be mm. difficult to, to cut them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, the, the final question may be this. Um, by confronting Sweden, especially Sweden, rather than, than Finland in this context, on the YPG, PYD issue, uh, Turkey is actually indirectly confronting uh, the, the United States, uh, which is the basic designer, choreographer, or, 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 or coordinator of the uh, of the of those activities there, especially with the you know ISIS and jihadists in sight. Uh, so, in that context, how do you see the role of uh, the United States? Uh, when regarding this this confrontational uh, situation now, because Ankara seems very determined about this, uh, and uh, incursion seems imminent because Erdogan is usually, as a politician, uh, speaking his mind, a man of his word, quote unquote. Uh, what would you? What would should should one expect from the United States, uh, the, from White House, from State uh, about this issue, as a as the, is it, you know in terms of its role now to to deal with this conflict? I, I think this will, if this happens, it will complicate things for the Americans as well, because the, the Turks and the, the Americans do have different views on, on northern Syria. They do have different views on the YPG, the VYD. So, and, and how to solve that, I don't know. But all these singular issues must be put in a larger context. And I mean, there have been problems between the United States and Turkey for years, perhaps since the coup in 2016. And since the, the uh, S-400, when, when Erdogan bought that uh, Russian uh, anti-aircraft system, uh, and when then the Americans threw the Turks out of the F-35 developments and, and buying those. So I, I, I see it as, as a multi-level, uh, multi-issue discussion between the two countries. And it's impossible for either you or me to say how they solve this. But I mean, politics is the art of the, of the possible. And, and, and I think the Americans really want the two Nordic countries into the NATO soon. I mean, mm. the US president went onto the White House lawn with these two leaders and signaled extremely clearly that this is the central strategy for the United States and mm. it's a central wish for the United States. I think it will be difficult for Erdogan over time to, to stand against this uh, US position. But mm -hmm. again, the solution here will be multifaceted, this hard to discern, and there will be lots of us for us to discuss and to, to study uh, in the coming weeks and months, I think. Certainly, uh, the, the old analysis point to that direction. It will be a very complicated affair, especially given the, the, the turbulent uh, scene in Turkey with the deepening, rapidly deepening economic crisis uh, and uh, also Erdogan being squeezed more and more by the opposition, by the central opposition uh, in these days. Um, thank you for this conversation, Jan. Thank you, Jos. Uh, my, my guest uh, from Stockholm was uh, Jan Hallenberg, uh, a research leader of Institute of International Affairs, Utrikes Politiska Institutet. And, uh, and an academic and analyst of, of the relations, especially in the context of NATO. Thank you again. Thank and you. Uh, hope to see you again in another hot pursuit to follow up on this complicated Absolutely. Affair. I hope so too. Bye-bye.